Hi, I'm Boxall. I'm the instructor for NRSM 102 Montana Range Plants. This is video number six, so we'll try to help you identify the characteristics of the major shrubs in the Montana area. And we'd like to thank the Montana State Teaching and Learning Committee for making this video possible, as well as the videographers Gage and Graham. Broom snakeweed or Gutterizia serothri is a perennial, native, warm season, increaser, and sometimes poisonous plant. This is a low growing sunflower type plant that is often indicative of overgrazing or prevalent during droughts. Oftentimes found on drier sites or sandier soils. This is an example of one in the field which was taken down at Three Forks at the state park. You can see it's a very low growing shrub and again if you have a lot of that present on any rangelands it's usually indicative of low quality range. Silver sagebrush or Artemisia cana is a perennial, native, warm season increaser which is usually found on silty rain sites or soils that are deeper or have higher productivity and is oftentimes indicative of a very productive site. This is an example of silver sage as you can see it can grow to heights of three to five feet tall. The leaf is very characteristic in that it just comes to a single point with no rounded edges or three tipped leaves. So here's a good close up of the lance shaped leaf of silver sagebrush. Prairie sagewort or fringe sagewort is Artemisia frigida. It's a perennial native warm season increaser. This is a typical Artemisia in that it smells like sage. It also has multiple flowers, in other words sometimes literally hundreds of flowers on the seed stalk. The leaves are mostly basal and they're finely divided into small linear divisions and this is where the name fringe comes from because they look like little fringes as they move up the stem. Usually an area that has a lot of fringe sagewort is an indicator of overgrazing or at least drought in the past. Big sagebrush or Artemisia tridentata is a perennial, native, evergreen, and an increaser under heavy grazing. The best characteristic of this plant is that it has the multiple seed heads of an Artemisia or a sage. It smells like sage and the leaf has that three characteristic three tips. Here's a good shot of the height of that thing. It can go anywhere from one to three feet. Notice the multiple flowers along the seed stalk in this particular plant and the very characteristic three lobe leaf which is very indicative of the big sage brush plants. Saltbush or Atriplex gardneri is a perennial, native, warm season decreaser, which means typically it's highly palatable and is removed under heavy grazing. One of the better characteristics for this plant is the shiny salt-like crystals found in the leaves. This plant is usually found on drier sites, but sometimes on more saline or sites that collect water. Notice the leaves on this thing are very shiny and appear to have these small wax crystals and the inflorescence has multiple inflorescence. Salt bush is very tolerant of grazing. Snow brush or Ceanothus Velutinitis is a perennial, native, cool season increaser. This plant has a very characteristic waxy leaf on the upper side, lighter on the lower side, and three prominent veins. 
This is a picture of Snowbrush in Glacier National Park. You can see it's a widespread, low growing shrub. Here it's easy to see those three prominent veins, which are the best characteristic for identifying this plant and the waxy leaves. Winter fat or Karashinin inin ecovia lanata is a perennial native warm season decreaser. The best characteristic for this plant is that it has very hairy leaves and a strong midrib down the middle of the leaf. It's a low growing plant, usually a favorite of wildlife as well as livestock, especially sheep in the winter time. And here you can see those very characteristic rolled leaves with a very strong midrib in the center of each one of those leaves and the leaves come off in clumps or groups along the stem. Curl leaf mountain mahogany or Circa carpus letifolius is a perennial native cool season decreaser. This is a favorite plant of mule deer and other ungulate species in Montana. The leaves are curled on the edges, dark on the top, and light on the bottom. It can grow to tree size, 20 to 30 feet, but typically it's 10 to 15 feet tall. Here's the underside of a leaf, and that's the upper side of the leaf that's very dark and waxy, and the bottom side's real light. Has those curled edges and a reddish bark appearance. Rubber Rabbit Brush, or Eric Camarilla, Naziosis or Chrysothamnus nauseosus is a perennial, native, warm season invader. Oftentimes in Montana comes in after a fire. It has low palatability for livestock but oftentimes is utilized by deer or other ungulates. It can be a shrub that can grow up to three to five feet tall but typically is about waist high has sunflower type leaves or yellow flowers with very thin leaves and usually the branches or the stems are lighter color than the leaves. Juniper or Juniperus species indicates that there are several juniper species in Montana the most common of which is Rocky Mountain Juniper and the leaves are distinctive in that they look like alligator scales. They overlap very strongly and they typically have blueberries. Juniper is a tree that can grow up to 20 to 30 feet tall. This one is about 6 to 8 feet tall. The best characteristic to identify it are these scaly leaves and the presence of these little blueberries in the case of Rocky Mountain Juniper. Shrubby Cincafoil or Dasiphora fruticosa is a perennial native cool season increaser. This plant has low palatability for livestock and wildlife but is often used as an indicator of high grazing levels when you can see a lot of utilization on a particular range site. This is a picture of a shrub of shrubby cincafoil that is probably taller than normal. A lot of people use it as an ornamental because of this very pretty yellow flower. Very showy, easy to see. The leaves are often hairy, which is where the name shrubby cincafoil comes from. Choke cherry or Prunus virginiana is a perennial native cool season decreaser and it's also poisonous, and especially the leaves and the fruits. So, this is one that has a distinctive serrated leaf all the way around the leaf margin. It's good to know this plant. 
here it is growing in the field it can often be a low growing shrub all the way to a tall tree but if you look for those serrated leaves that come to a very defined point and those large red or almost black uh, fruits this is one that has caused death in horses and cattle especially early in the spring antelope bitter brush or Persia tridentata is a perennial native cool season decreaser highly palatable plant for wildlife especially antelope and deer and elk will use this but cattle will take this plant as well the best characteristic for this low growing shrub is the presence of this three lobe leaf that is dark on the top light on the bottom and it has a very prominent midrib on the underside of the leaf so as we rotate these three lobe leaf you can see that it's dark on the top lighter on the bottom skunk bush sumac or Rus trilobata is a perennial native cool season decreaser another plant that has a distinctive three lobe leaf and later in the fall has the presence of red berries is also good forage for wildlife such as elk and deer the plant can grow to five to six feet tall here are the red berries very present in the middle of the summer in this particular year and there is a good example of the deeply divided three lobe leaf that you find on skunk bush sumac. Woods Rose or Rosa Woodsi is a perennial native cool season increaser. The best characteristic for this plant are the serrated leaves, the very showy flowers, and the presence of thorns on the stems. You can find Woods Rose throughout Montana in the foothills and the plains. Big showy flowers. The leaves are serrated. And of course the stems have thorns on them. So here's the serrated leaves and here are the thorns. Greasewood or Sarcobatus vermiculatus is a perennial native cool season increaser this plant is usually found on saline sites or alkaline soils or very heavy clays it is usually not a very good browse species for cattle or for wildlife it can grow five to six feet tall the leaves are succulent and small greatly reduced the stems almost look like thorns but they're not and then it has the inflorescence is almost like a little pineapple shaped flower snowberry or symphoricarpus species which means there are several species in montana we just want you to learn the genus is a perennial native cool season increaser this plant is in the honeysuckle family so it has twin paired opposite leaves in the field you'll often find it on more productive sites or overflow range sites here you can see the twin paired opposite leaves and the honeysuckle type bell-shaped flowers this is a close-up of the flowers usually on the terminal end current or gooseberry or ribes species there are several types of species in montana ribes are the plants that are usually used for jams or jellies they produce berries so many wildlife species eat them and humans use them as well the leaf on a gooseberry is dollop shaped or has a number of 
rounded serrations and many of the gooseberries have thorns this particular plant has no thorns and is found on a variety of range sites in Montana red osier dogwood or cornus stolonifera is a perennial native cool season decreaser often used as a ornamental plant around Montana it has a very showy white flower in the summertime it's oftentimes used as forage for some wildlife species it has a very dark red bark and the leaves have a distinctive symmetrical venation pattern so that it looks like it has a strong central rib that is has branches radiating in a very symmetrical pattern Rocky Mountain Maple or Acer Glabrum is a perennial native cool season decreaser this plant is often found in the foothills of Montana the leaf is divided into three major lobes all of the lobes are pointed and then they have serrations along the top of each one of those the bark is usually darker and this plant serves as cover for a number of wildlife species such as mule deer provides quite a bit of shade so you'll see livestock as well as wildlife utilizing this tree for cover